you have a planner or a coordinator, they're going to run the rehearsal for you. If you're having your wedding at a church, there's likely going to be a church coordinator to help run things. Check with your venue first to see if someone is going to handle this. If not, this video will give you a step-by-step -step process for having a successful rehearsal. If you are the bride or the groom or a parent of either, enlist the help of a friend to help you handle running the rehearsal. You need to rehearse, and that will be hard to do if you're running a rehearsal. Watch this video and then send it to someone who can help you do this job. Here is our step-by-step -step process. Before running a rehearsal, take some time with the bride and the groom to walk through the ceremony space. Ask them how they want everything to flow. Get the list for the processional and ask about any special moments, needs, or plans. It's so much better to iron out the hiccups privately without the entire wedding party or the intimate family sitting there watching. On rehearsal day, arrive 15 to 30 minutes early at the ceremony venue, orient yourself to the site, figure out where the restrooms are and where you're gonna position the wedding party on the altar. If the officiant is attending, introduce yourself and review the rehearsal plan. If you have a timeline or any sort of information for the attendees, put their names on them in advance and hand those out as people arrive. Then you'll know who you are still waiting for when you still have their information in hand. Two to three minutes after the scheduled time, start getting the attendees' attention. Keep in mind that venues have a limited time for rehearsals, so that's usually about 30 minutes. And it's okay if you start the rehearsal before everyone has arrived. Do your best with who is there. Ask non-wedding party members to stand in for people who aren't there when needed. I like to begin by getting everyone's attention, but I avoid yelling at all costs. I just start talking. So start with a louder comment that does not directly ask for quiet, but it's clearly a little bit louder than the noise and indirectly addresses those who are talking. So welcome everyone, let's get started. Then ask everyone to come to the altar area to begin. And once everyone's quiet and attentive, then introduce yourself and the officiant. From there, review how the rehearsal is gonna run and begin. Your next step is to get everyone positioned. So seat your parents and your grandparents in the appropriate places for the ceremony. That way they can kind of watch what's going on, but they're not standing there. Then you're gonna position the wedding party where they will stand for the ceremony. Map this out with a client beforehand, like we said at the walkthrough, keeping in mind what's the proper wedding etiquette. Take care to space the wedding party evenly, standing at an angle towards the guests and the couple with the attendants at each end a little more forward than the maid of honor and the best man. This looks better in pictures and helps the guests see each person in the wedding party better. Bridesmaids should hold their bouquets in front of them below their waist at their belly button and groomsmen should decide on clasping their hands in the front or the back of their body or placing their hands at their sides. Everyone's gotta do the same thing. If everybody's doing something different, it doesn't look so good in the pictures. For flower girls, ring bearers, or any child attendants, have them seated in a row with their parents and ask one of their parents to wait on deck with them for the processional. The couple should stand at arm's length with each other. In other words, they should be able to hold hands during the entire ceremony. So couples tend to want to make some space during the ceremony for the officiant to be seen. And that just makes the couple look like they don't like each other in pictures. So I'm going to repeat that. Stand no further than arm's length apart. If you stand too far apart, you really are not going to like those pictures. Now, once you have everybody lined up, your next step is to practice the recessional. Tell the wedding party that they should remain lined up in the order at the beginning of the aisle after practicing this recessional. So you're kind of giving them a heads up. All right, I'm sending you back down the aisle, but stay there, don't move. Generally, the wedding party recesses in the opposite order as they process. So after the couple is introduced and they kiss, the maid of honor should hand the bride her bouquet. Then the couple recesses completely down the aisle before anybody else in the wedding party moves. Then you can send the child attendants, the best man, the maid of honor, followed by the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and the parents. Grandparents have the option of recessing, but if they wanna stay put because there's pictures after, that might be smart too. When there are pictures right after the ceremony, remind your wedding party that immediately following that recessional on wedding day, they're gonna go right back around to the altar to take pictures. All right, now that you have everybody in the back and they know where to go, it's time to practice the actual processional. So line them up in the back, make sure everybody's in the right place in the foyer area. And ideally you can have all the participants out of sight of the guests before they process. For spacing, choose a halfway point to signal when the next person should begin. In some churches or sanctuaries, there's a requirement or an expectation that you should bow when you get to the altar. So if that's the case, make sure you coach them how to do that. The actual order is dependent on the specific desires and customs of the couple. So you can consult Emily Post's wedding etiquette for special situations. Men are usually on the right, women on the left, except in the case of the bride and the father who are flipped. 
check out our video on wedding processionals here. For two brides or two grooms, ask them if they have a preference. If not, suggest that they both walk with both parents and decide between them who is first. Have the first set of parents remain standing so that they can embrace each other when the second person reaches the front with their parents. There are a few extra moments to choreograph with the attendees to have a smooth ceremony. First is standing for the bride. The mother of the bride traditionally stands to signal to other guests to stand for the bride. So discuss with the mother of the bride about her role in doing this. Her cue is when the doors close or the final attendee processes. Let her know that if she forgets, you'll signal everybody to stand. Next is the handoff. In a religious service, the father of the bride should kiss his daughter and then shake hands with the groom. If appropriate, he then bows towards the altar and sits. Then the bride and groom bow and approach the altar. But we always try to remember, we tell the dads, you know, hug your own child first and then shake hands with her fiance. If other parents are involved in the handoff, they kiss their child first and then the in-law to be. Sometimes parents of the couple also greet each other during this time. The next item that you need to choreograph is fixing the train. So review with the maid of honor how she should fix the train. When the bride takes her place at the altar and is still holding her own bouquet, the maid of honor hands off her bouquet to the next maid. So then she has her two hands free. Then she fluffs the train. From there, she places her hand on the bride's shoulder, takes the bouquet from her, and then takes her place. Sometimes the bride wants to hold her bouquet during the ceremony, and then the maid of honor can wait to take that bouquet till right before the vows when the officiant says, please join hands. So that's a signal like, I can't hold my bouquet because I have to hold hands. And she hands off her bouquet to the maid of honor. The next part of your rehearsal is like the meet, the review of the ceremony. And that's usually the easiest part for you because the officiant is gonna take over. At that point, the officiant will review the script for the ceremony highlight any important moments like any roles of the readers or the vows or the final exit. Next is the kiss. So remind the officiant that it's best if he or she sort of steps aside for that kiss so he's not in all the pictures. Then you'll close with a thank you and a reminder that you'll be available at the ceremony to remind everyone all about everything you discussed today. Distribute any remaining paperwork or ask a member of the wedding party to hand it off if the person wasn't able to attend. I hope this guide will help you have a successful ceremony rehearsal. If you're looking for a coordinator in Southern Louisiana or Mississippi, fill out our online form and we'll get back to you within a business day. Thank you for watching our show and happy wedding planning.